good. Here we go. Hold on. Not gonna be thirsty for you. Oh, sick. Oh, yeah, even if I'm like right here. Yeah. So. Perfect, man. And you want to go that way? Wait. I don't know how that's gonna. You go that way. You're gonna be the leading it, so you can maybe shift back and forth. Okay, okay. How about. Well, if that's the case, nah. Should I go landscape? Nah, I was just thinking, like, should I almost just not even do them and just have you do them? Nah, I mean, I feel like you should. You should. You could definitely, like, get up and correct me. Yeah, okay. But definitely be showing off and be in it with you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Sick, man. Then let's do it. I'll just go. To, I'll just try. And dude, I like I like certain videos with the the three deep breaths in. So definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. let's do it. Let's do it. Actually, dude, I could start. We could start with a breathing technique then. Do it. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, man. All right. Hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Stretch the Soul Volume Two. My name is James Fox. I'm Nicholas Langhorn. We run this YouTube channel. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, grounding into this present moment. Let's start by taking bringing our conscious attention back to breath, back to all our present sensations, what we're seeing, what we're hearing, what we're smelling, what we're touching. Let's not forget about that sixth sense either, that what we know without knowing, right? That <laughs> ever important intuition. But I thought to start taking inspiration from that amazing Breath of the Superpower video, we could do a Nadi Shodenham breathing technique. What's that? Nadi Shodenham. That is Sanskrit for alternate nostril breathing. Oh, okay, okay. And so what we're gonna do to start this, right? We're gonna take our right hand. We're gonna take our, use our thumb and our ring finger. And to start, we're gonna take that thumb. We're gonna put it right on our right nostril. Boom, just like that. We're gonna take three inhales and exhales through the left nostril, slow, deep and controlled. Once we've completed that cycle of three, we're gonna take three inhales and exhales through both nostrils. Slow, deep, and controlled. Spectacular. Once we've completed that cycle of three, we're going to take that right ring finger. It's going to close our left nostril, and we're going to do that last cycle of three out of the right nostril. Slow, deep, and controlled. No forcing, just flowing. Wonderful. How are you feeling, my man? Pretty dang good, man. <laughs> I'm, that is lovely to hear. Hope you guys are feeling good, too. Heck yes. Much love. Now, if you're wondering what the purpose of that technique is, right? So, as we are focusing on our left and right nostrils, this correlates to our left and right hemispheres of our brain, right? So, when we're breathing strictly out of our left nostril, that correlates to our right brain, our feminine side, our intuitive side, our creative, our compassionate and imaginative side. When we're breathing out of our right nostril, that correlates to our left 
hemisphere of our brain. Our masculine side, our logical, our thinking things through side, our planning side. Now, there's sort of a bit of a debate, I would say, in the spiritual community about people are always talking, oh, you want to tap into that right brain. And yes, I totally agree. You want to tap into that creativity, to that imagination. But 100%. as with every polarity, you don't want to just focus on one extreme end. You want to meet in the middle, mm -hmm. that middle path, as the Buddha talks about, where if you are, if both energies are harmonized, you can use your intuition with objectivity, and you can use logic with creativity. So there's one, the other, both, and neither. That's a deadly duo. Deadly duo, <laughs> my man. Now, another great benefit of this breathing technique is since we're harmonizing both the yin and yang energies, this energy is coiled at the base of our spine. It's where 85% of our energy lays dormant. And as we access and harmonize each side, each polarity, we begin to awaken this untapped into energy, this 85, where 85% 85 of it is stored, right? And as this begins to happen, we begin to ascend to what is known as Christ consciousness. But what, we can get into that later, right? So now what we're going to do, now that we're nice and grounded in the moment, now that we're in the eternal realm of now, always there, never changing, infinite consciousness, infinite love, infinite compassion, right? Now that we've used breath, that invisible tether to the spirit realm to connect us to that eternal now, we're going to combine this breath with some nice, basic, simple movements. Mm -hmm. Now, Nick, do you have any part of the body you'd like to work on today, my man? Well, I think James is feeling it. We just ran a lot of hills. Oh, and definitely. I don't know if you guys can tell, but my legs have been shaking ever since I started standing. So, uh, the legs. I won't stretch my legs out. The legs? I, fantastic. I can't really stand right now. <laughs> Dude, I feel you. Mine are shaking too, like wobbling was, a little bit. That was the first time he was with us, so he's really feeling it. I'm used to it. Right on, man. So Let's then, see. legs. We can, um, we can start with our feet. Now, I hope you guys can see, Nick's gonna stay going on landscape and I'm gonna try and uh, just act as like a mirror for you guys, right? So, what we can do, we can start with our legs about four to five feet apart, right? We're gonna take our right foot, we're gonna point it straight out to the right. We're gonna inhale our arms up at our sides, palms facing down. We're gonna take some nice deep breaths. The key is to combine breath with movement. I like that. So on our next inhale, we are going to connect our right hand with our right ankle. Left hand points straight up to the sky and we're gonna gaze just ahead of that left hand. This is Trikon Asana, triangle pose. How many uh, breaths should we take? Well, since we did cycles of three to start, we'll go with another cycle of three. After your third exhale, we're going to inhale the arms back up at our sides. We're going to breathe into that, feel that stretch, and then, you can never forget about the opposite side, we're going to flip the feet. So the right foot comes on a 90 degree angle, left foot points straight out to the left. Take a couple nice deep breaths. On your next inhale, left hand connects with left ankle. Right hand points straight up to the sky. You can put a micro bend in the left knee or it can be straight, whatever feels more natural. You can also Drop the right arm so that it points straight out to the left. You want to try and make sure that your hips are aligned in one plane with the lower body. After your cycle of three breaths, we're going to inhale back up. 
And we really want to take our mental attention and ground it in that stretch we just did. Feel the difference between in your legs between before you did that and now. We are working in. Exactly, brother. Now, what we're gonna do, we're going to go onto our hands and knees. Thank goodness. I can't stand any longer. <laughs> right, one thing we want to uh, make sure is that our knees are in line with our hips and our hands are in line with our shoulders. We're gonna take a couple nice deep breaths here. Slow, centered, focused. After you're grounded down here, on your next inhale, what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull the tailbone up towards the sky, drop the abdomen, pull the shoulders back, look up at the sky. This is cow. And on your next exhale, drop the tailbone, pull the abdomen in, push the shoulders away, let the neck hang heavy, cat. Now we can just repeat this at our own pace making sure to combine breath with movement. Are our toes tucked or? Whatever relax. feels more natural. I prefer them to be flat on the ground. Or this. But it is totally your call. Inhale, cow, inhale, cow. Exhale, push away, cat. This is a great stretch to massage the abdominal organs, stimulating digestion, releasing all tension from lower and upper back, lengthening and strengthening each vertebrae in the spine. And it is also a fantastic kundalini awakener. Speaking of cat. Bogey. <laughs> I can't stand, bro. I hope you guys can see my cat. He's here with us in spirit if they can. Fantastic. On your next pass through center, we can stay here. This is just tabletop pose. Can you explain pass through center? So when I, yes, pass through center, your back, when your back is parallel with the ground. So we're coming back to that nice, easy, this is just tabletop pose. Think about it. We are making a table with our backs, right? Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna connect our big toes behind us, keeping the feet flat. Our knees are gonna spread wide. We're gonna sit back on the ankles. We're going to connect third eye to the ground and our hands extend long in front of us. This is child's pose or bal asana. I'm sorry about the long grass, man. I gotta cut my lawn. It's okay. It's kind of funny. It's my thicker. mom's been on my butt about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least uh, now the dandelions are getting a chance to grow. <laughs> That's true. Child's pose is great for releasing tension in the lower back, lengthening and strengthening the spinal column. It also massages the abdominal organs, stimulating digestion, and connecting our third eye to the ground here, especially the soil, sends a signal to our entire nervous system to completely de-stress. My third eye is going crazy right now. Right? With all those negative ions, my man. On your next inhale, slowly walk the hands in towards the legs. Then you can use those hands to push your upper body back up to sit on your ankles. And this is a pose in and of itself. Is there grass on my face? Ah, uh, nah, you're good. All right. This is hero's pose and is a great hamstring, thigh, calf, complete lower body stretch and toner. Hero's pose as a leg down. Right? It's like you just saved the world and you're just sitting here like, what the heck do I do now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the apocalypse has come and now there's nothing left to do. <laughs> the 
Let's but there's everything left to do. <laughs> As above, so below. You brought up a great point. Nick just mentioned the second hermetic principle of the electric universe, correspondence. As above, so below. As below, so above. And what that means to me, right, when we're taking this time to heal our bodies and to promote our inner world's function and ability to sustain itself, that mirrors in the external world. So every time we heal ourselves, we heal the outer world. There is no separation. Now, are your toes tucked or? No, no they are not. They're flat on the ground. Sorry, I should have said that. Thank you for reminding me. Right on. So now what we can do, next thing, we're going to sit on our butt, legs long in front of us. We're gonna take a couple nice deep breaths to ground us back into this present moment. I'm gonna face this way. Right on. Perfect. Now, on your next inhale, we're gonna raise those arms up towards Father Sky. Exhale, release down to your toes. Let the neck hang heavy. Try and connect your elbows with your knees. Let the ne neck hangs long for Pashimottasana, or seated forward bend. It's also good to focus on curling the toes back in towards your body for an added calf stretch. Ah, there's a bee in my ear, man. What? Yo, that just took me back to when we were on the Delaware Water Gap and that bee stung you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's an inside joke. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but we're just gonna keep breathing here. On your next inhale, arms can extend back up to the sky. So you can sit back. Exhale, arms come down to the side. I can really feel that change of consciousness you're talking about after the pose. Absolutely, man. After we have opened up these channels in our physical body, we are also opening up our energetic body to be more fluent with change, open to doing something different, getting out of a negative pattern. There is no separation between mind and body, all one. All is one, one is all. Now what we're gonna do, on our next inhale, we're gonna take our left foot, we're going to connect it to the inside of our right knee. Mm. Boom. Didn't I tell you about this? You might have. The, the, the arch of the foot connected to the Oh, knee. in tree pose, yeah. It's like a sacred uh, tapping into an ancient energy, right? That's yeah. dope. We'll definitely have to do tree pose later on. Oh, okay. But, um, if I can, stand on one foot. Yeah. <laughs> but so, on our next inhale, we're going to raise those arms up overhead. Exhale. Hands drop down to the right foot. Try and connect those elbows to the right knee. Let the neck hang heavy. Just breathe, baby. After a cycle of three inhales and exhales, we're going to inhale the arms back up to the sky. Exhale, release to the ground. Now we're going to flip it so our right foot connects to the inside of our left knee. We want to keep our hips, both hips, firmly planted on the ground. We're gonna inhale those arms up overhead. Exhale, release down to that left foot. Connect those elbows with the left knee. Let the neck hang heavy. Just breathe.
after a cycle of three inhales and exhales, we're gonna inhale those arms back up overhead. Exhale, release down. Now one thing that I know I'm doing that I, I shouldn't be doing is I'm taking like shallow breaths. Try to get your breaths as deep as possible. And that's just for everything. Amen, brother. Now you don't want to force it and you don't want to try and over extend your lungs, but inhale deeply and powerful and Wu Wei, just release everything on that exhale. Don't force it, just let it all go. I have trouble with that. I always try to force it during my meditation sometimes. Me too, man. I catch myself doing it all the time and it's sort of just, it doesn't fit with the flow state that meditation is all about. For some reason, I think that my lungs are having like a bad day or something. I'm like, yeah, what the I know exactly going on? what you mean. You feel like that tension kind of in your back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But hey, that's all right. Now, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna connect our feet in butterfly butterfly pose in front of us. But we're gonna do a little bit, add a little bit of a twist here, right? So we're going to inhale our arms up overhead. Another thing I should have said, don't make it like your average. Um, butterfly pose where your feet are really close to your hips. You want to kind of extend them out almost more like a diamond shape. So inhale those arms up. And now exhale. We're going to release down onto the ground in front of our feet for butterfly forward fold. We're going to let the neck hang heavy and we're going to feel into that abdominal organ massage that stimulates digestion boosts metabolic function, helps our body heal itself. After a nice, calm, centered cycle of three breaths, we're going to inhale those arms back up overhead. Exhale, release them down to the ground. Fantastic. How are you feeling, my brother? I think my face described you if you saw my face before that. <laughs> Glad to hear it, man. Glad to be a part of this with you. Now, next thing we can do, right? Any part of the body calling to you or? Fantastic, oh, yeah. then let's lay on our backs. <sighs> Love it, right? We're gonna keep our knees bent. We wanna try and bring our feet as close to our butts as we can. We're gonna take a couple deep breaths to ground ourselves for the moment. Winds blowing, birds are chirping, sky is so clear and blue. On our next exhale, what we can do is extend our hips as far up and away from the ground as is possible. We're just gonna keep breathing. You want to try and make it so that just your shoulders, neck, back of the head, arms, and feet are touching the ground. This is bridge pose. This is a great pose to practice diaphragmatic breathing, where as you inhale, you let your lungs expand your stomach as far out as feels natural. And as you exhale, you center it all back into your core. This breathing technique stimulates digestion and just charges our each and every chakra like you wouldn't believe. Being inverted like this in bridge pose boosts blood flow to the brain 
It lengthens and strengthens the entire spinal vertebrae. And this reverse blood flow can help relieve cold and flu symptoms, can heal migraines, and is a fantastic kundalini awakener. Anytime you have your head and heart below the hips, you are awakening the kundalini. Now after you have really stretched out that lower body and hips, on your next exhale, you can drop the hips down to the ground. Now what we're gonna do, on your next inhale, take that, we're gonna keep the right knee bent, take that left ankle, cross it over top the right knee. We're gonna breathe into this. You can even take your left hand and push that left knee out and away from you, however much feels natural. And on your next inhale, we're going to take both hands interlace the fingers underneath the right thigh and pull that thigh in towards us for figure four. This is a fantastic hip opener. <laughs> Heck yes, my brother. After that left hip feels nice and open, you can drop that right foot to the ground. And let that left foot come back to the ground too. And we can never forget about that opposite side. So we're going to take our right ankle now, cross it over top the left knee. We can use our right hand to push out that knee out and away from us. And then on your next inhale, interlace those fingers underneath the left thigh and pull that thigh in towards you. Feel that in the right hip, right thigh, right quad, whole right leg. Looks like it's disappearing towards the back. Sorry, contrails are a good one. Uh, now on our next exhale, we can release both feet to the ground. Now what we can do, take our hands, hug our knees in towards our chest, and just give ourselves a nice loving warm hug that we oh so deserve. <laughs> I deserve it so much. So much. When we love ourselves, we love the world. You can even rotate those knees clockwise and counterclockwise to massage out that tailbone. As you inhale, Pull the knees in towards you. Exhale, push them away. Oh, I like this. This is a fantastic root chakra meditation. And after you have circled one way three times, never forget about the opposite way. After you have circled three times, pull those knees back into the chest. And then exhale, release the legs long in front of you. Now to cap off this inverted section, what we can do 
On our next inhale, we're going to raise our legs up 30 degrees. Pause and breathe. Inhale them up to 60 degrees. Pause and breathe. And then inhale them up to 90 degrees. And we're just going to rest here in the classic inverted pose. Where should our hands be right now? Your hands can be anywhere that feels natural. For me, that's at either side of my hips with the palms facing down. As I was saying before, not only does being inverted like this stimulate blood flow to the brain, healing migraines, healing all sort of cold and flu symptoms, but this reverse blood flow also does a great job of toning the entire lower body and oh. the core. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so on our next exhale, we can drop the feet back 60 degrees, pause and breathe back 30 degrees, pause and breathe, and then drop them back down to the ground. I hope you notice the difference pausing at 60 and 30 from on your way up and on your way down. clarification that was a time trail it's gone <laughs> glad to see it fantabulastic so now what we can do fantabulastic <laughs> <laughs> on our next inhale we can sit back up Where am I? Whoa. Everywhere and nowhere, my friend. I hope you are enjoying this thus far as we are embarking on a journey of self-love. Now what we can do, how are you feeling, man? Do you want to do a couple more poses? Do you want to call it there? Let's do a couple more to finish it off. Let's do it, man. I feel amazing, but if I keep going, I know I'm going to feel even more amazing. Heck yes, the train keeps on rolling. So, perhaps what we can do then, right, we'll come up to a nice standing position. We want to slowly make our way up there okay, as good. we inhale. I'm going to jump up like a ninja. <laughs> right? Feel that blood rush down to our lower body. Inhale here. Now, before we go into any other like balance pose or anything like that, we can just stand here in Tadasana or mountain pose. Hands come down to either side, tailbone elongated, core pulled in, and just breathe. This is a pose that you can take with you anywhere, anytime. Anytime the external world is weighing you down, is just lowering your vibe, just stand, take a couple deep breaths and be grounded in the fact that you are a multi-dimensional light being having a human experience and there is nothing to worry about nothing to get stressed about. Life is but a dream. Now, on our next inhale, what we can do, slowly start to shift the weight onto our right foot. As we start to feel more balanced, we can take that left foot and there are a couple different things you can do. You can place it around your right ankle, you can place it around your right calf, you can place it around your right thigh, the inside of your right thigh. The only place you don't want to place it is on the inside of your right knee. But after you have found 
your resting place for that left foot. We're going to inhale those arms up overhead. And one thing that I should have said before we started this, but I'll still say it now, one of the best ways to balance yourself, balance your body, is to focus in on a single point with your eyes. It is known as a drishti in Sanskrit. And eyes are the windows to the soul. So if you still your eyes, you will still your soul. That's why making eye contact with someone is never a coincidence. And it's why it feels like looking into another universe, because you are. Should I be bending my knee? Your left knee or your right knee? Right knee. Right knee can ha take a micro bend if that helps you balance, or it can be straight, whatever feels more natural. What's up, Matt? But on your next exhale, we can drop that left foot back down to the ground. Shake out any tension in that right leg. Let's keep breathing. And on that next inhale, slowly start to shift the weight onto your right foot. It can either foot. onto your, oh yes, I'm sorry. Thank you for correcting me. Shift the weight onto your left foot and your right foot can either be placed on your ankle, inner calf, or inner thigh, just not the knee. Find that drishti, that singular foc focal point. Inhale those arms up overhead. Grow your branches. Feel rooted in being. Hey, and that's all right, man. You fall, but you can just get right back up. Right Never back up. Me. We will only know what it's like to be up if we have fallen. We can only rise and we can only fall if we have risen. Yin and yang. As you were falling and, 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 and it's difficult because I'm, I don't do yoga that much. This guy's a yoga fanatic, he's crazy with it. <laughs> Focus, focusing on your breathing is really the most important part when you're most frustrated. It's hard to really focus on your breathing when you're frustrated, but exactly, it helps because when you are one with breath, you are one with spirit. There's a great video that I'll put in the description. It's and the quote is, uh, "The spirit mobilizes the mind, the mind mobilizes the breath, and the breath mobilizes the body. With those, with that knowledge, anything is possible." Love that, man. And Thank you for sharing. The only way to test that is to put it to action and try it out for yourself. Amen. And there is nothing wrong with failure. It is a part of life, and it is the more we seek out failure, the more ability we then have to rise above it. If your shoulders are a little stiff like mine, I have really bad shoulders. Um, Shoulder pain is a real big issue for me. Just keep relaxing them. Just keep breathing. But on our next exhale, since we've been holding this pose for a while, we can drop that right foot, shake out any tension in that lower body, feel the difference in the lower body after that balance. Balance in body, balance in mind, balance in spirit. Dude, I can go run some more hills. Dude, me too. Isn't it crazy how Don't charged say that, you man. up we're like gonna, that? We're going to be running hills after this. We can't be saying that. <laughs> <sighs> Fantastic, my friend. Well, I think this was an amazing journey of healing our inner worlds. So to finish this off, we're just going to lay down in dead man's pose, right on our flat on our backs. A teacher of mine has told me that Shavasana or dead man's pose is the period at the end of every yoga sentence. It allows your body to absorb all the work and love and kindness and high frequency vibration that you just poured into it, absorb and integrate. 
this is not just an experience that you're going to leave behind, but rather one that you will carry with you throughout your entire life. Anytime the world's weighing you down, you can just come back to this place of peace in the infinite dreamlike state of mind. Taking breath with astral projector. My hands are tingling. On your next inhale, you can slowly bring your attention back to this space, back to this moment. You can invite small movements in your ankles, in your hands. All circles, clockwise and counterclockwise. And on your next inhale, you can come back up to a sturdy seat. Nicholas, I want to thank you, my brother, for joining me on this journey. It was absolutely divine. Yeah, man. I really think that it's going to help with the... Dude, uh, we shifted to the right, man. Have we really? Yeah, man. Look at the stump, man. <laughs> oh the stump. Gosh. Hey, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, man. I really think that, like, me being, like, a newcomer is really going to help out everybody else with this. Absolutely. You're right, man. And uh, it's easy for me to forget that not everybody is at the same place as me in my journey. So, for the viewers out there... Any feedback is more than welcome. What can, what can I do next time to more tailor this to your energy? Could I maybe make things more intense if you're looking for more of like an exercise? Could I make things even more relaxing? Let me know. I have an infinite array of poses at my disposal and I'm honored to share them with any soul out there looking to heal themselves. Peace and namaste.